That's it. That's it. That's Tremendous. It. That's all I've got. Welcome back to Anderson's <laughs> TV. Hello. Uh, thank you for joining Pete and I this afternoon, this morning, whatever time of day or night it might be. We're going to look at a quick product comparison uh -huh. uh, that is the Veilton GP200. Uh, and 100. Sorry, you're right. I didn't mean to. I meant 100, <laughs> didn't yeah. I? The 200 version has been our kind of recommended favourite more affordable effects unit of 2023 maybe going into 2024 I haven't seen anything that we like better it, yet it could be 2024 um, now you're watching it and if you are watching it and liking this then welcome and please like and subscribe because you might win something every 10,000 new subscribers beautiful how many yeah, times yeah. you said that now I've said it uh, quite a few times <laughs> so the 200 uh, comes in three versions this is the biggest one uh, probably the most popular one as well mm -hmm. uh, and then you can get condensed ones that either you can lose the expression pedal or you can have less switches on them but it's all still basically the same operating system and mm -hmm. those three units all sit between like two and three hundred pounds but if two or three hundred pounds mm -hmm. is outside of your budget you're looking for something more entry level than that the GP100 is the baby brother. That's very cute. Yeah, it is. And this is much closer to the £100 mark. And I just thought, oh, let's pounds, see man. how different it is. There is a very helpful comparison chart on the Veilton website that gives you all the technical differences. In fact, we'll put that on screen now. I was going to read it out to you, but it's a bit boring, to be honest with you. So uh, here are all of the, the you know, the, the, how many different effects can you run at the same time and all that kind of stuff. But the, the one thing that is the same on both is they're both 24-bit, 44.1 kilohertz audio processing. So they're decent quality yeah, units. That's all right. I've got the... Uh, GP100 here also plugged into a laptop. The editor that you can see on the laptop is free to download from the Veilton site and does remove the biggest sort of difference, I think, between GP100 and 200, which is the fact that the GP100's got like a postage stamp screen. It's so it's small. really difficult to kind of see exactly what's going on. Mm. Um, whereas, of course, when you see it on the laptop here, it's super, super easy. Um, and it's for Windows as well as iOS. So. Much to Pete's disgust. Um, <laughs> so let's just have a quick, the, the red, the red uh, box in the middle is just going to switch the input into either the 200 or the 100. Everything's running into our interface, so you're hearing the DI'd sound. Um, you can run these into guitar amplifiers if you want to. Or if I have our caps. Or if, yeah, 4x12 uh, by far four by twelve. if you really caps, want to. Because that's what you need. Uh, no. So let's just have a quick, like this is patch one on the 200, it's a slightly okay. different sound, but you'll hear it in a minute. It's such, an, it's such a first patch of anything, yes. it's just like a... It's that kind of patch with delays and reverbs and everything. It's still, I've got this unit in my office, and I still think that amp model is so nailed on, though. It's just, what is I know the it's amp got, model on here? Um, I don't he, know, actually. It's a good question. It's just called It's GP200. We'll look that up in a minute. And that, is um, that one called It's GP100? Yeah, so this one doesn't... <laughs> uh, it's clearly now not an identical amp model, so if you have a play between but the two... And it's still stereo, which is amazing. I mean, yeah. I know this is XLR, and that's, but uh, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so the amp on oh I see so they're different amp models depending on the two so the oh, go, GP200 then. is the Mesa 4LD and the GP100 is using a bog red, which will be some sort of bogner thing. But, but, but you know what? There's a Mesa Plus just, 2. Yeah, I was just trying to see now what other amp models. There's so many amp models on here. So we don't have the exact... Oh, yeah, we do. There it is. Well, we need to try to see if we can get the match to sound yeah, the same. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know. Would it be fun to see? Can we see the amp here so we can see the different so, uh, presets? I, I'm not, you know, I. You, know, you always do this with John, so. I'm, it's fine. So, again, you, you've got the same. 
editor or, or the same style of editor mm -hmm. on the GP200. However, you don't, you kind of, it is a bit easier to get to where you want to get to, uh, you know, to see what's happening from yeah. the screen here. Yeah. So you'll notice that on the 200, I've got these shortcut keys along here. Uh -huh. So I can literally just go, show me the reverb, show me the amp, whatever. And then, and then straight away, you've got all your different but it's amps. not touch screen, no, you have, you have no, to... No, it's not touch okay. screen. Well, I mean, for, for um, the money, what yeah. do you expect? So you, you, you'd basically dial up a different one and then hit it again, and then you've basically got another amplifier. So, um, so this is the same amplifier now on these two. Do you know what? <laughs> Except, of oh, course, I we, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it does sound so good. So we can certainly see again, if I remember rightly, yeah, so you've got bass, middle, treble, you've got gain, 50, presence, and volume. And uh, Okay, so we don't have any kind of preamp pedals or anything plugged into this uh, no, over okay. here. So if we go back to here, we stay with our Mesa. We've got the gain. It said it was on 50, didn't it? So we'll put I think the gain here on was 50, like... but we do have a distortion pedal on. So if I turn the distortion pedal off, we should... <laughs> There is a green thing well, on here, or is there? I don't know. That's the What's EQ that? pedal. Oh, it's the EQ uh, pedal. So, okay, so I think the first thing we've established here is we're clearly not running the same software uh, in terms of no. the engine, because we've, we've, we've very quickly sort of grabbed two uh, amps that are named the same, and you can hear they don't sound entirely the, the same. But it's fine. We'll stay with this GP100. And I just wanted it's to so kind cheap, of... Man. You know, it was less about, you know, is it going to be exactly the same as the GP200? It was more a question of like for 120 quid or whatever this is, yeah. does it still feel like you could have some fun with it? Uh, some of the other features, by the way, USB will also work as an audio interface, not just to connect it for the editor. So the editor's not Bluetooth, it's it requires USB yeah. connection. But they said that will then work as a... Um, Audio interface into your door. Uh, what did you have on the back? You had a headphone socket, an auxiliary input, and stereo output, as well as uh, your input control. Uh, we've got the expression pedal on the front here, which can work uh, either as a, a volume <coughs> control or as a wah wah. We've got loops, we've got drums, we've got loads of stuff. So let's just go through some presets for now. So that the default mode that it powers up in mm -hmm. is patch mode. Okay. So up, that's all you have. That's it, up and down through the patches, dead easy. There's another mode, I think it's called stomp mode, <laughs> or pedal <laughs> mode, or something like that. And that's where the buttons, instead of going up and down through the patches, would be assigned to uh, combinations of these effects. So you can com combine like an overdrive yep. and a delay on one switch. Um, you clever. can hit them instantaneously and get quite a nice tuner. There you can see that now. Or you can hit and hold them both and it will open up a, a cool 90 second um, two button looper. Uh, and we'll definitely, definitely <laughs> have some fun with the loops. We'll play, we can loop the drums, the whole thing like that. So we can have some fun here. But for now, let's just go through some of the presets and maybe I'll show you again how the editor works. So I have a question, right? Mm. So people buy software for their, on their laptop yep. and then they have an interface to plug into it. What? Why not just buy one of these and plug that in? Because you've essentially got the software there. Mm -hmm. This works as an interface, and you've got switches on it, which you don't have on a, like, say, a Focusrite or whatever. Why wouldn't you just buy this if you're a guitar player and you want your stuff at well, home? And, I mean, I mean, I'm just, I'm just. Yeah, going, you're playing I'm, devil's why? advocate. Can, I'm playing. Can you? Yeah. Uh, can somebody answer me? Why would you buy a piece of software over this, mm. which essentially has got the software on the computer? I, I'm going to probably go. I think there's two main advantages with plugins one one is that obviously is the reamping side of things so if you're using a plugin within your door obviously you can record your guitar track it records it dry you can reamp it then using the plugin might be getting a bit deep for someone that wants to do this the second one is generally speaking a plugin will just have way more stuff in it like way more effects but whether it's better well again this is mean, just uh, here again of course, i'm just playing what it what a plugin doesn't have is switches a, a foot switch or a controller yeah. or anything like uh -huh. that you couldn't well, it's not ideal for sticking on the floor and putting into a guitar amp and taking to gigs and stuff. I mean, some people will say you could take your laptop, but you, you could you take your laptop and plug it into an FRR but, cap, and but, but you couldn't switch the switch. That people you generally switch. don't. But so I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'd want to know what people think out yeah. there, what they prefer to do. I think there's just there's customers that where the plug-in is the right thing, there's customers where this is the right yeah. thing, and there's customers where just ye old-fashioned guitar just, amplifier and I'm some just, pedals is the right thing. I'm just uh, um, intrigued. Let's just try Blink OD. Blink Patch 187. Two. Don't know if it is it. A... 
That doesn't, is kind doesn't of, sound very Blink 182 y to me. I don't know, but Clean. I, I like this patch. Yeah, it's nice. I think that's great. I think I, I, there's I agree. nothing wrong with that. I completely that. agree with you. Now, interestingly, again, you can see from here, it's ready to have uh, a green OD stomped in on front of it, even Which though the pedals, red. even though the pedals are. <laughs> uh, that's that's why I the same that, on, I like, on. I thought it was green. The, the type of effect block is always the same color, yeah. even though the pedal might infer that it should be a different color. Uh, and if I can remember rightly, let oh, me see if I can go. get this into <laughs> foot switch mode. Huh? So we're in patch. If I change it to stomp mode, Oof. what you'll see now is, yes, you can see now I'm just turning oh, on go, yeah. off the distortion pedal. <laughs> You need a bit more drive on that. Well, and, and to, to be honest, what also is quite nice to see here, and you can see this either on the screen oh. or on here, um, and we mentioned this before, these switches don't just have to turn one effect on and off. So on this particular one, foot switch one has been designated to yeah, turn yeah, the distortion yeah. off, and foot switch two is actually going to simultaneously turn the delay and the reverb off as well. I if see. you want it to, you can change that yourself. Um, I'm Sorry, gonna go. I, I, th I, was, I thought these three switches was the three uh, knobs on there, so I accidentally turned the master volume down, but we'll oh, fix that. Uh, so I'm just going to go nope. back to the, <laughs> generally speaking, the three knobs on here yeah. are whatever the three um, yeah. parameters are that yeah. show you. So at the moment, the di we've got master volume, yeah. P volume, I guess that's patch volume, and yeah. then we've got BPM for the drum machine just on the home page. But anyway, look, I'm, I'm back. It's got some more, more sounds. So wah. Wow. Well, it's called wah, wow, isn't it? It's called... Oh, no. It's called... No, that's... that's best Solo. Yes, yeah, so it's called Best Solo. What Pete's seeing on the screen oh, here... Oh, I saw the T wah. Sorry. ...is the, the preamp pedal. Uh -huh. Is a is a V wah, but it's not it's not switched on. That's this little. So if I switch it on, oh, oh here we go, heavy metal. That's for you, Oz. Uh, warm, clean. <laughs> warm, clean. Hey. I preferred the one before. But, yeah, I know. just think there are plenty of affordable devices mm -hmm. by Zoom and Boss yeah, yeah. and Hotone and Moore and mm -hmm. uh, I've probably Donna, I've probably forgotten some of them, but you know, there's loads of them. There's something about the, the Veilton amp modeling that I just think is very, very good. I, I think their, you know, their basic uh, tones are just, do you know, I thought that said Slick Riato there, and I thought that was some sort <laughs> of Riato. some sort of uh, Rick Beato. Uh, well, he uh, just nods, plays but... completely quick. Modern UK, not a big fan of that one. That should be like, that's like um, a Vox or something, wouldn't it? I don't know, it's a bit uh, tune it's this like a Marshall E, JCME kind of thing. Oh, it just says Flagman. Might be Friedman, I don't know what Flagman. I don't know, they, obviously mm. I'm looking at the these names here, you know, so they obviously can't for copyright reasons say exactly <laughs> what the amplifier is, so you sort of have to guess, What's but Flagman? I don't know what Flagman was, but anyway. I think uh, if, nice. I, if I have to sort of be again yeah. play, I think all the sounds are kind of similar, even though you're switching between, you know, say a, a clean and another clean and another clean, which is supposed to be another amp. They feel, they feel like they're a little bit sort of, that seems like the other clean we heard and the other clean yeah. we heard. Does that make sense? I mean, I can. It's not, it's not a, no, you know, I'm, I'm not expecting for this amount of money, I have to not expect anything. And I like it. And I yeah. like when we did the whole tone, me and uh, um, with John. And I had I didn't know what to expect other than this is a little pedal like this yep. and it's little display I don't know what to do and I, I'm I'm the pleasantly surprised. The guitar you know? world is crazy, right? Yeah. Because uh, uh, once you're into buying expensive guitars and expensive amplifiers, you'll spend more on a gig bag 
than you, you will spend on, more on a, on on a, a pedal. On you a strap. On well, no, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, you, yeah. You, you could spend more on a guitar strap. You know, than, <laughs> yeah. than, than you could on you one can. of these. Yes. So I think this is very much. I, I always, I, I always feel with this, it's just a fantastic um, way to, to encourage yeah. people that are perhaps slightly earlier on in their journey. I mean, you think about the thousands of people that have got a, a 99 pound guitar and a little 15 watt guitar and for Christmas, and it's like they're into it. A couple of months later, and they're thinking, oh, what, what can I get? Yeah. One of these is just going to massively expand the horizons of, of yeah, what it's you can a, it's do. Inspiration horizon, if there's such That's a thing. That's my band. Is it horizon um, is by inspiration? <laughs> tender solo. Oh, tender solo. <laughs> I don't know what a tender solo is, but... Fat Plexi. Fat Plexi. Tight. Big, big clean, clean sound. So, and you get in that fact, stereo. That, um, this little chain of effects down at the bottom here, I might as well just explain to you, that's essentially the signal path that's going through the, the GP100. Mm -hmm. Your pre-pedal uh, is anything that you would typically have at the beginning of the effects chain. So you've got boosts and wah wahs things Acoustic like that. Acoustic simulator. Yeah. Okay, so put that on for a minute. Uh, oh, uh, Axim. Even with the chorus. I know Ben loves the chorus on the acoustic. Let's turn that off. In fact, let's just leave <laughs> it back on compression. Then you've got distortion pedals, mm -hmm. and that's going to be a whole range of everything from distortions and uh, overdrive pedals and stuff. I don't know if we've got any, any fuzzes on there. Oh, red haze. Yeah, red haze and things like that are fuzzes. Oh, red haze must be um, uh, the little round one that's red that somebody called Jimmy once played in a haze. And, loads and, and loads of guitar amps and bass amps. Shouldn't forget the bass players. You can do that too. Oh, cool. That's good. Um, cabinets to match that cabinet with. Mm -hmm. uh, you can load your own IRs in, even on the GP100, <laughs> which is mental. Uh, so if you're, not, if you're not entirely sure what that is, but those are actual impulse responses of real cabinets that you can find on mm -hmm. the internet and you can load in if you want so to. Celestia do some good ones. Um, then you've got noise gates, then mm -hmm. you've got some EQ, obviously a lot less options here. Uh, then you've got modulation effects, so that's where your choruses and flanges and stuff like that would be. Then you've got your delays, lots of different delays, and then you've got your reverbs as well. So I mean, wow. it's, it's tons and tons of stuff. Uh, and you put that all together in whatever combination you like, and that you save that and give it a name, and that's your patch. Um, let's do some looping. So you can even again, do that from there. You can pick the loop and the tempo and the funk, the type of the drums and everything. Yep, you what? certainly can. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to loop with no drums now. So again, you've got 90 seconds on here. It's exactly the same functionality as a standard single mm -hmm. button. You know, you can loop and overdub and overdub and overdub. It's quite nice here because you've got two buttons. The second button is your stop and your delete button. So you haven't got to worry about doing that double tap thing that you sometimes have to do. So okay. one, two, three, four. <laughs> So that loop is in there now. There's a volume control here for the loop. That loop is in there. You can see the loop, the blue line playing round and round and round. There's an overdub mode. If you've, if you've got uh, a looper already, or you've used a looper, you'll be familiar with that. Um, and what's quite nice on this as well is I can easily change the uh, sound, the patch that Pete's got. So if we just move on to the next one, golden head. Golden head. A bit more driven. So the loop is going to stay using the clean sound that we recorded it with, yeah. but the solo now is going to be this sound. Yeah. There is actually another mode for the looper where, uh, as I change the preset, it'll change the sound that the loop was recorded with as well. But here we go, so here's a bit of fun for Pete. So 
Sorry. Super simple looper, <laughs> 90 seconds long. That's one of the uh, advantages of the bigger one. It's a 180 second looper. Well, then quite why you well, need it that long, who knows? That's like a 12 bar, but if you, exactly. if you can loop a 12 bar and hit it on the four again, sorry, the one, sorry, the four, <laughs> then, then you'd be absolutely, but, you know, you're So, so you're 90 seconds is cool. There's no, as far as I'm aware, there's no loop library or anything like this. It's very much like you record one loop and then when you turn the unit off or you want to do the next loop, That's you it. just Done. overwrite the, the, yeah. the one you've just done. Uh, but how much is a looper pedal? How, mu how know, much is like 100 and something quid for just a normal looper pedal and you get well, all of this into one Probably thing. the uh, like an equivalent looper pedal to what's in here is probably 70 or 80 pounds. Yeah. So it just, it's mad value. Uh, now, of course, what you can't do Magnum with a normal, with most looper pedals, you can with some in fairness, is have mm -hmm. some drums over oh. the top. So let's have a little look here. Uh, now the drums, I think as soon as I press the drum button, we're going to get drums. So. Here we go. Have we got volume for the drums? We oh, do. Yeah. Oh, that's good. So I can but at least slow. tone myself down. Right, so different genres of drums. We've got uh, funk, blues, blah, 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 pop, etc., etc., electronic. I can see it over there as well as it's switching. There are definitely, again, more drum sets in the GP200 than okay. there are in the GP100. But I can adjust the... Oh, sorry. <laughs> Was that you or me? How's that coming through? Because the, this is only switching the guitar in. Oh. They're both on all the time, <laughs> aren't they? Um, I just wanted to see. So I can adjust the uh, beats per minute. Obviously, I can adjust the volume. Um, now, I know on the GP200, I can sync the drums to the looper. I don't know if I can do this on the GP100, so we're going to find out. So here is my funky drum sound. Yeah, it's funky. Uh, and now I'm going to go to the looper and see if it disappears or if it carries on. Oh. Yeah, okay. Okay. Let's get a sound that's um, like a... <laughs> Are you happy with that? Yeah, man, I'm uh, fine with that. I want to just turn the drums up a bit. Yeah, go, go, go. Right. So we faded out on that particular loop because what one of the again one of the differences between the GP100 and the 200 is you can't sync the drums to the loop on the 100 whereas you can on the 200. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is it's all I need to do when I do the I, I start and stop the loop if I'm just a millionth of a second different to the what the the, the loop that the drums the is beaters, on. Yeah. As we get past the first, you know, five, ten bars, whatever, that millionth of a second is just drifting and drifting and yeah. drifting and drifting until actually the drums are completely out of sync with the loop. So that really, I think, actually on the 100, you should probably use the drum machine and the looper separately. Yeah. So either Unless just jam along with drums maybe or there'll make Maybe there will be an update loops. at some point. Yeah, oh, maybe. Because that's a really um, cool feature. Do you man. know what? The update thing, maybe it is worth going and checking because the sync feature for the 200 was added as an update. Okay, but that's all, so, these all new firmware updates. Yeah, so. what I mean is if you're watching this six months down the line, yes, maybe they've absolutely. added that feature yeah. to the 100 as well. They should do, they should do. It's Mayors another good common. reason to, um, in fact, you know what? I can just show you that on the, on the you know, if we do the same yeah. thing, I do still have to start the drums independently to the looper. So if we, oh yeah. We've got a slightly, um, where's my volume control there? Yeah. Right, we've got a slightly a more explanatory layout here actually on the 200. So these the, these two buttons here are gonna do the same kind of features that were on here, but across the top, we've got things like half speed and reversing. Oh, actually I can start and stop the drums from this screen. I didn't even see that, I apologize. Try it, try it, try it. 
There you go. And, and you can tap the tempo. Yeah. Okay, so there's tons in this. Do, 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 do. Right, so I all right, well, we, go. let's go. So count me in. Okay, one. Oh, hang on, I need to start the drums. Can we take some delay off this? One, two. Hang on, no, oh, I'm not in uh, the loop one. now. <laughs> Here we go. One, two, uh, uh. So a bit of a, I realized that we didn't have the sync mode switched on. Uh, that's what we were doing. You may not have been able to hear our microphones over the, over the guitar sound. But yeah, so I, I, but obviously what you can hear is because we only played for two or three bars before we even mm. realized the sync, we didn't have the sync mode switched on. Uh, the drum beat goes. hadn't <laughs> drifted enough for you to hear it yet. And then you can just apply this, you know, really you should, we should have just started with the sync mode on it. We didn't be fine. Anyway, um, enough rambling. You're into it now, aren't you? It's still going, man. Yep. What is this thinking about, Lee? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I, I genuinely, genuinely, I know Vailton aren't the biggest, best-known brand. You know, brands like Boss are way better known like that. But I just think these are amazing. I'm so into the sort of like, you know, how affordable these are. And Pete's point from way back in the video about did you buy this or a plug-in and all that kind of stuff. I'm a sucker for this hands-on. You know, uh, I, I'm 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 always more at home when I can. As well, well, as well, it's on the screen. It's on the screen. If you want it on your feet, then it's at your feet. You can have it both with yeah. a long cable. You know, you can have it both places. Yeah. So I, I, and you can have you know, if you have this plugged into that, you have output from your laptop into your yeah. speakers. Or, I mean, I'd, I mean, I'm I'm not sure that would be the way I would go. So so me. really, again, going back to this GP100, I don't think there's an awful lot more to really tell you about here. You know, you, you crikey, you've got mad. Um, you can get some of one you, positive grid uh, FR cabs and just stick that in there. And absolutely. You've got a set, what I set up absolutely. At home. Yeah. I mean, you, you again. These some of these features are quite pro. You can independently left and right decide whether or not you want the cab emulation on. So you could have one output with cab emulation that you give to like a front of house. The other cat. The other output with no cab emulation that you plug into an amplifier. What does Danish Pete think? In three seconds. See, that's Mark. That, that, who needs that at uh, this? In, <laughs> probably I mean, not. Look at, that's three seconds of your life you will never get back. Thank you. It's all there, but. But I think, a lot, I think a lot of this is where you've got <laughs> yeah, the functionality yeah, in yeah. here and it gets ported down into the smaller one. I mean, if you're um, 12 years old, you're not, probably not going to need that. Yeah, going to, like unless I say, you're, you, unless you're into you know, you're, I don't know. You've got USB audio, global EQ. Global EQ is always good. I just want to yeah, five that, pages of a full param full. Um, Parametric parameters. EQ. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure what I was going to say then. Uh, look, 120 quid, or That's if you're great. sort of thinking, oh, oh, I've got a bit more money, the, the 200 family does start from about 200 pounds with the little LT version of this and then goes up to the, the this is the full fat one at about Videos 300. up here. So, yeah. what are, so what, are, what 100, 200 LT, 200 JR, so as in junior, junior, and then the full 200. Yeah. Um, where's great. another 300 like a 500 well, like I mean a maybe that's like coming that. from Vailton next year you know who With knows everything in it and a touch um, screen and all that stuff see well it's where it's going for like for like four or five hundred yeah, quid for 27 pounds <laughs> yeah. whatever £27, £50. Uh, so there you are um, thank you very like much it. for tuning in yeah give the little GP100 some love just before Christmas that might make an ideal stocking filler for someone yeah. uh, right anyway thanks for joining us before we go I said all the patches sound the same. Can we just flick through some patches I think, and play, like, play yeah, a little yeah. bit? I mean, it, that I would think be our play out. We, we right. only got from patch number one to patch number 13, and I get what you're saying. We kind of had lots of clean ones that were very similar and yeah, some yeah. overdrive ones. But let's see. Let's, let's see just, what's there. You, yeah. just, we won't talk Here anymore. We I'll just go through them. <laughs>
Yeah, I think I'll take that back. Can you imagine being a, a programmer for this and, and somebody says to you, oh, before, uh, just before we put this out on Monday, could you just write me the 100 presets for it, please? <laughs> yeah. It's what? like, no wonder they get a bit weird. I like that. <laughs>